The 2021 Apple TV 4K is a streaming media device powered by Apple's A12 Bionic. It supports HDMI 2.1 for 4K resolution up to 60 frames per second and HDR. HDR support includes HDR10, HLG, and Dolby Vision. It has dual band Wi-Fi 6, a thread radio, and a gigabit ethernet port. Both the new Siri remote and TV box support Bluetooth 5.0 and an IR transmitter slash receiver. The Siri remote also has a dedicated button and microphone just for Siri. It also has a lightning connector to recharge the internal battery. The combo costs $179 for the 32GB model and $199 for the 64GB model. The Siri remote can be purchased separately for $59 and is backwards compatible with the previous Apple TV 4K and Apple TV HD. What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the Home Theater Hobbyist, and today I want to give you my full review of the 2021 Apple TV 4K. Now, first and foremost, this is hardware that I purchased. This is not review hardware. And I purchased it because I've actually been wanting an Apple TV 4K for the past several years. But honestly, there were a couple of reasons why I held off. The first was price. $179 starting price I thought was a bit expensive. I already own a couple of Roku boxes, a couple of Amazon Fire TVs. So honestly, this isn't a niche that... I really need, I've, I've already got this niche covered in my house, right? But I wanted a, an Apple TV 4K so I could, you know, test apps that may be Apple only or it may be a little bit different on Apple so I could be able to talk about them. But I decided, uh, it's a little expensive. But honestly, I actually kind of got over that expense. And so that leads me to number two. The second reason I did not purchase the Apple TV 4K was simply the remote. The previous Siri remote, in my opinion, was a bad remote. And honestly, I think a lot of people would agree. But for me, I tried it over like a weekend and I just I just didn't like it. I, you know, I was at a friend's house and I tried it and it was just it was just not good. It was symmetric on both sides, so I couldn't tell by feel which way was up. Obviously it was small, so it would get lost in between couch cushions. Uh, the tracks pad sensor, I didn't like. It was a little too sensitive for my taste. I mean, I just, I just didn't like it. And again, I didn't want to pay that kind of money for um, a hardware interface that I did not like because the remote is obviously the main hardware interface that you're going to use. Now, I was aware that you can use your phone and I just didn't want to. If it's got a hardware remote, I'm going to use that. I'm not going to use my phone unless I absolutely have to. So I said to myself, you know what? Don't worry about it. They come out with a new one with a new remote, purchase it then. And that's what I've done. They've come out with a new Apple TV 4K and a new remote. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. So let's start off by talking about design. Actually, as a quick aside, before we talk about design, I want to talk about the Apple TV HD. Apple is still selling it. It's basically this box, but it doesn't do 4K. It only does HD. It's $149, and that is very, very expensive for what it is. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking about buying the Apple TV HD, do not buy it. I repeat, do not buy it buy it. It is way too expensive. If you just want an HD streaming media stick, go with like the Amazon Fire TV stick or the Roku streaming stick. They're both like $25 or something like that. You can save a ton of money. But if you want to stay in the Apple ecosystem, spend the extra $30 and get the Apple TV 4K. And the reason why I say it is because it will last you longer. And this will work with an HD TV. So even if you don't have 4K and you have no plans to upgrade to 4K, this will still work. This has the A12 processor in it, whereas the Apple TV HD only has the A8. And so the A12 will be faster and it will receive future software updates much longer into the future compared to the A8 and the Apple TV HD. So this is a much, much better deal. Still expensive, but a much, much better deal than the Apple TV HD. So please, if you're thinking about buying, don't buy the Apple TV HD. Buy the Apple TV 4K, even if you never plan to buy a 4K television. Okay, so now that we've talked about all of that, let's talk about the design. And from a design standpoint, the Apple TV box itself is no different than the previous generation 4K box or even the Apple TV HD. Um, it's basically four inches square with about an inch and a half of depth. So it does fit in your hand just like that. You can just carry it in your hand. So there's not a whole lot new there. I mean, you've got new HDMI 2.1, it's got the A12 processor in it, but there's really not a whole lot more than that. 
The real newness in this whole setup is this remote, the new Siri remote. It's much better than its predecessor. It's made out of aluminum. And as you can see here, it looks really, really nice. It fits in your hand like a remote fits in your hand. And it is um, got buttons on the top and on the bottom. So you just know by feel where you are with remote, which is quite nice and something that I like about it. And it feels really good in the hand. It's got, like I said, it's got a metal or aluminum casing. So the aluminum feels nice and cool to the touch. You've got these black buttons. So there's nice contrast between the silver and the black. There's black up top for this IR receiver and the Apple logo on the back is black as well. It also has all the buttons that you generally going to want on a remote. I mean, obviously could it use more buttons. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely more buttons you could put on a remote, but this takes care of all the basics. But like I said, I don't have the previous generation Apple TV, uh, but I do have this. I do have my Roku and Fire TV remotes right here. And to be honest with you, this reminds me a lot of the Fire TV remote. They're basically about the same height and overall about the same thickness with similar sort of button layouts. You got a directional pad up top with like your play pause, your volume button and everything like that down there on the bottom. So there's a lot of similarities there. Now the back of the Apple TV remote itself, it's got a little bit of curvature on it so it'll rest in your hand, but it doesn't have as much curvature as the Fire TV remote. So it's not gonna feel the same. There's also not a finger bump on the back. Um, like this has, this has a little indentation on the back for your finger. Now, as far as the Roku remote, it has the most bulbous back with the biggest finger bump. Honestly, the remote Roku remote is the most comfortable in hand remote. And it's not just because it's more bulbous and it has a little finger bump, but also because the edges are a little bit more round. The Apple TV remote has these square edges. They're not totally square. There's a, probably a little bit of chamfer there, but I mean, it will sit flat on the table just like that. Whereas these other ones won't do that at all. They'll all just fall down. So this is comfortable. Don't get me wrong. I don't want people to think it's not comfortable. It is comfortable, but it's not quite as comfortable as some of its competitors. So in the design category, I give the new Apple TV 4K an eight and a half out of 10. The box itself is nice looking. It's just going to slide under your TV. You don't have to worry about that, but they've retained the full size HDMI port on the back and ethernet jack. So you can plug it into your network if you want to and get all the bandwidth you need versus worrying about wireless. Um, as far as the remote con is concerned, it is the star of the show. It is a nice remote. It fits in your hand the way you want a remote to fit in your hand it's in that it's longer and thicker. There's also decent contrast between the metal and the buttons. They're not backlit, but they do work very well. Um, as far as the overall design is concerned, like I said, I wish the at least the back here was a little bit more curved and didn't have this edge because I think it would be a little bit more comfortable in the hand. I also wish that instead of having the Siri button right here, that they actually included a volume rocker like Roku does along with a mute button because it makes it extremely easy to find when you're watching your shows. You can quickly find volume. I mean, this works, don't get me wrong, but it's even better when it's on the side um, because whether you're right-handed or even a left-handed, you can definitely just find the volume buttons in the dark and you know where they are. But otherwise, again, I think Apple's done a good job and I give them an eight and a half out of 10. Now let's talk features. And honestly, I've buried the lead a little bit. Um, the new Apple TV 4K does support high frame rate up to 60 frames per second. And that means that you will have smoother motion in videos when you're watching it. So that means that you can take your iPhone, you can shoot some 60 frames per second in HDR and just airplay it to this box and watch it, which is really cool. But honestly, most movies, 99.9% .9 of them are actually shot at 24 frames per second. I can only think of like three movies um, off the top of my head that are uh, higher than 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. So it's not a big thing for movies and even TV shows. Most of them are 24 frames per second. You've got soap operas that are shot at 60 frames. So those will look nice and smooth here too. But the whole point is there's not a whole lot of other content out there that is high frame rate, but the box does support it. So that's a good thing. The next thing I want to talk about is the new color balance feature coming from Apple. Now, the good news is it doesn't just apply to the Apple TV 4K. It also applies to the previous gen 4K model and even the Apple TV HD, as long as they support the latest TV OS, which I think is 14.5 or 14.6. What it does is it calibrates the color coming out of the Apple TV, not your TV itself, but the color coming out of the Apple TV to be more accurate. 
and you need obviously an Apple TV and you also need an iPhone that has a face ID and you can put it up on the screen and it will go through its calibration. I tried it myself and for my TV, honestly, it, it almost didn't make a difference. It might've pushed red just a little bit, but it was almost imperceivable to be honest with you. But I did try it, it does work. Now, if the settings on your Apple TV are set up for 4K Dolby Vision or 1080p Dolby Vision, the color balance feature will not work because it's saying that the Dolby Vision is accurate enough. But if it's set for 4K HDR or 1080p HDR, you can go in and use the color balance feature. The last feature I wanna talk about is Enhanced Audio Return Channel or eARC. The 2021 model of the Apple TV 4K supports it. And what it does is it's going to send higher quality audio to a stereo pair of HomePods. So if you have a stereo pair of HomePods, and we're talking about the original HomePods, not the mini ones, connected to your television, you can connect a HDMI cable to the compatible eARC uh, HDMI connection on your television, adjust the settings in your Apple TV, and it will send higher quality audio. I give the Apple TV 4K an 8 out of 10 for features. I like the high frame rate support. I wish it went up to 120 frames per second instead of 60, but 60 is better than nothing. Uh, I like the fact that they do have the color balance feature so you can see if you're getting better colors coming out of your Apple TV than you know they would normally. So that's cool. It'll definitely help some people's television. I also like the fact that they have eARC support if you have a stereo pair of original HomePods. So that's another bonus to have that. Um, and I like the fact that it supports all the major formats of HDR with the exception of 10 plus. Now I do wish they had 10 plus because there is some HDR 10 plus content out there. I also like the fact that they support Dolby Atmos, but again, I wish they supported DTSX as well because that's the other major 3D audio format out there and there is some content. But again, I think they do a good job, but not an excellent job. So eight out of 10 for features. Now let's talk video and audio quality. I'm gonna start with the menu system first. The good news is it is fast and fluid. You're able to move apps around where you want to move them. And also of course, add apps from the app store. Using the Siri button on the remote allows you to log in with your login credentials with your new apps without having to go through that menu system and dance with using the remote. But you can also add a Bluetooth uh, keyboard if you want to add a device in the device settings menu. The remote itself does feel good in the hand. I did like using the touchpad in the center, but I am still getting used to it. And the good news is you can actually turn it off in the menu system if you want to. Now, as for video settings, I did set this up as 4K 60 frames per second with Dolby Vision enabled. That way the menus would be nice and fluid. But I did go in and select match content on for both dynamic range and frame rate. That way, if I'm watching a movie in standard dynamic range at 24 frames per second, this would output exactly that. Now moving on to video quality itself, all the movies and TV shows that I watch look great, whether they were on an app or from iTunes. I did try some high frame rate content from my iPhone and it did work as expected. I also rented Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, which I believe is in 4K 60 and it did look like it was in high frame rate, but I couldn't confirm it, so I don't wanna specifically say that it was, but it did look like high frame rate. I also tried some Apple TV Plus content and it looked great. Now I'm not subscribed to Apple Fitness Plus, Apple Music, or Apple Arcade, so I didn't try any of those different services. But as far as audio is concerned, I did get a Dolby Atmos signal from my AV receiver when this was connected to my AV receiver for that content. Uh, but when I connected it to my television, uh, my TV only passed down a Dolby Digital 5.1 signal. So that was just kind of something that I found out. So if you want Dolby Atmos, I would say connect this to your AV receiver and let it pass through Dolby Vision if your AV receiver can do that. So I give this a nine and a half out of 10 for video and audio quality. It looks good, it sounds good, it does what it says it's gonna do. Now I still wish it supported HDR10 Plus and DTSX because there is content out there, but it does what it says it's gonna do and it looks good, so nine and a half out of 10. All right, so let's talk value and I give this a three out of 10. At 179 for the 32 gigabyte model and 199 for the 64 gigabyte model, it's very, very expensive. And honestly, I don't even know why they have different storage tiers. Quite frankly, I think they should just pick one and stick with it. Uh, when I think about the competitors to this, I mean, you can get the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K, which supports all the same formats, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, HDR10. I think it even supports HDR10+. Um, 
for $49. And with that, you just plug it into your TV. With this, you have to buy an additional HDMI cable to get it to work. So it, it works, it's, you know, it's got great picture quality, audio quality, but it's just very, very expensive. So I give it a three out of 10. Okay, so let's wrap this up. The Apple TV 4K is a great streaming media box in that it has nice picture quality and audio quality. It has support for all the major formats of HDR and audio. It doesn't have DTSX or HDR10+, but honestly, that's not a big miss. I mean, I don't fault any box for that because those uh, formats aren't really all that well supported. But it's got a great design. The new remote is definitely a big step up from the previous remote but it is very, very expensive. So I don't recommend it for the general consumer. Honestly, you're better off getting something like the, from the Amazon Fire TV family or the Roku family. All the same apps, all the same great picture quality, just for less money. Now, if you are in the Apple ecosystem and want to buy a box, this is the one to buy. Do not buy the Apple TV HD. It is just way too expensive, but otherwise it works, it's good. Do you need to upgrade to it from you know a previous generation Apple TV? I wouldn't. Um, I'd buy the remote if you really want a good remote, but otherwise, that's about it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Drop me a comment in the comment section below. Also, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you next time.